Streets need a pop. Nobody wants ya. Streets need a pop. Sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures. Famous can now actually rap about something he was involved in himself, because he in the streets got a body when he killed Freddy, claiming his first kill before even Kane and Stark. Although some would argue Kane and killed Buck 20, it was never revealed who got the kill, with D-Wiz claiming the body in Season 1, Episode 2. But after breaking down Marvin's mistake which he made with Sam, and how he's someone who'd been talking to Berg, a thought did spring to mind. Not only is Sam a loose end, there are several loose ends that could cause some of our major characters issues going into episode 10. Problems that could land some in jail and have others enter the game. Because just like Rock once said to Kanan, the same applies to Famous. You been started Kanan. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You pull that trigger, you in it. Ain't no going back now. And Famous is well and truly now in the game, but at what cost? Could the old man behind the door snitch? Or could Corinne and the weapon be an issue? But this isn't the only snitch problem we have. Crown's corpse was found in the lake, so could Zeezer prove to be a problem for Lou, especially considering Cartier's death? And should he have been honest with Rock about him killing Crown? And then there's Scrappy's mom, who did say she'll take matters into her own hands. But where there's a snitch problem with a few scenarios, which we are going to break down in just a moment, I do think it's worth taking a look at someone who held it down. I down rock out to you? That makes me a fucking snitch. I ain't going out like that, man. No one's ever gonna know. I don't know. Despite having all the ammunition needed to turn on both Rock and Marvin, not only did Unique hold it down, he straight up told Salbacelli his son Marco fucked up, and that's not something he can blame Marvin for, and you really do have to admire Unique in this scenario, because not only did Marvin take a shot at Unique and his son in season 1, Rock framed him for something he didn't do and sent him to jail for 3 months. In episode 8, Unique also had the opportunity to dime Marvin out because he knew it was Marvin who was working with Marco. But despite him knowing the truth, he still didn't snitch, nor did he bow down to Sal's demands on him spying on Rock. So inadvertently, the move that Rock made at the beginning of season 2, with keeping her friends close but enemies closer, ended up working in her favour, on this occasion anyway. And one of the great strengths Rock has is her ability to think three moves ahead, while men around her constantly underestimate her. And we've seen how she's been able to use this to her advantage, for example, with Cartier. Because from the beginning, she was using him, whereas Cartier found her extremely attractive and wanted to be involved with her romantically. But this destroyed everything he's built, because the perception of Rock was his own fantasy. And so Rock got the upper hand on Cartier. But let's have a look at a different perspective when it comes to Unique. Now, although we've established she's a great chess player herself, I really don't think she could have ever imagined Unique helping her in the manner he's done. But Unique is someone who's playing an even bigger game. And Law 2 from the 48 Laws of Power does say, Never put too much trust in your friends. Learn how to use your enemies. Because by hiring a former enemy, he'll be loyal to you more than a friend. Because a friend knows your weaknesses. They know when and how to hit and when you're most vulnerable. But I also wouldn't say Unique is loyal to Rock. I think the right saying is, he's loyal to his own cause. Because he was put in a situation where he could have easily betrayed Rock for his own gain, but he didn't. Unique stayed true to the street code, because he's no snitch, even if they are his enemies. He also knows getting in the middle of personal beef between Sal and Rock is the last thing he wants to do, because it's all about to be a bloodbath, and Unique is weighing up his options, and he'll definitely pick the winner. For example, if Rock wipes out the Italians, Jazzy is there for Unique to sweep up. So as we finish on Unique, I'm gonna finish on something Unique said to Marvin. You know like I know, until that body shows up, he ain't dead. And if he ain't dead, he's still talking. And this brings us on nicely to the subject of snitches, and someone who could very well find himself in trouble is Famous. See you Corinne warned Famous that if he were to do something with the gun, then she'll say he stole it, which is a key detail for maybe what's to come. But what led Famous to this point was a whirlwind of events, from being kicked out by his mom to then taking a favour from Crown. 
who is hooking up the landlord with free studio time. But now Crown is dead, it's time to pay up. So the fact he was about to lose his apartment, he was feeling the pressure. And unfortunately for him, Cartier closed the door when he tried to get help from Lou. But there's no way of telling whether Lou would have helped him anyway, but I would like to think he would have. But after seeing Freddy, Kanan reminded him of the grimy shit he does to get paid. But it's not a life you want to live, because it is a life that ends up with death or jail. So with Detective Howard warning Kanan, Famous was a clown. This was a decision which was beyond stupid, because Famous definitely didn't think about the consequences. When you're standing in front of someone, and when you pull, and he pulls, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to have no choice but to pull the trigger. And that's what went down in this scene, right as Freddy approached for his piece. And although the death of Freddy is significant, in terms of making famous a killer, the consequences that will follow will be worse. The old man who was behind this door had everything, including Famous's name, and now he's a problem, because if he talks, let's just say, Famous may have his living arrangements sorted for the next few years, but it's going to be in an orange jumpsuit behind four walls and bars. So how's that for living arrangements? Because you wanted to be in it, so now you're in it. Now I also do worry about what could Famous say if he's ever questioned, because he does have a tendency to run his mouth, although I don't think he'd be stupid enough to snitch, because Kanan would never name his son after a rat, but I wouldn't put it past him if he accidentally let something slip. For example, Kanan being the son of MH. Now another problem is Crown's death, which Rock did question. Any word on who took our crown? I think owed everybody money. Could have been anyone. So where Rock questioned Lou about who killed Crown, what do you guys think? Should Lou have been honest, or did Rock know or have an inkling that it was Lou? Because not only can this come back and bite Lou, it also affects Rock because she was only able to get the keys to this house, showing income from bulletproof records. But then all of a sudden, Crown's body appears, so it's not going to be a good look for either Lou or Rock. And to make matters worse, Crown is a death which Ziza knows was down to Lou. And even though it seemed like she is down for Lou, let's see if Cartier's death changes things. Because as we've been saying since Marvin kept Sam alive, no Lou sends. But as we talk about Lou sends and snitches, one confirmed snitch we do have is Scrappy's mom. She's Detective Peng C.I. and she threatened to take matters into her own hands if the streets don't get her body for Scrap. And we still haven't seen a resolution because she was nowhere to be seen in episode 9. So I fully expect this situation to cause Rock another headache and it's just another issue to add to her long list which goes from her relationship with Kanan, the war with the Italians, Marvin not killing Sam, Crown's death, the secret of her relationship with Howard and her being a CI, finding out Scrappy wasn't the snitch after all. So I guess you could say, there is definitely a lot on Rock's plate, and with her eyes set on this bloodbath of a war with the Italians, could one of those issues come back and haunt her? And so with that being said, that's a breakdown of a snitch problem going into episode 10. Could someone say something by accident, or have their back against the wall being questioned by law enforcement, forcing them to snitch? Could Famous find himself a new home in an orange jumpsuit? And could Crown come back to bite Rock and Lou? Or will Scrappy's mom get there first? Drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section. And of course, if you are new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related. But as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.